What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Show Me Your Rig. This is episode number seven. Don't forget, though, that when we hit episode 10, we're going to be giving away $100. So make sure you get those submissions in to this email address right up here, showmeyourrig at gmail.com. One thing that I've noticed about a lot of submissions that have been coming through, and I've been getting a lot of them, so if your rig has not yet been featured, I'm sorry, I'm trying to go through them as fast as I can, but I can't get everybody's system onto the program, at least for now. So thank you for sending them in. Keep sending them in. But something that I've noticed a lot of the time is there are systems that are coming that are, uh, coming to my email that I would love to be able to feature, but I can't because the photos aren't good. So make sure you, I mean, even if you're taking the photos with a cell phone, that's entirely fine. But the higher quality of the photos, uh, the more diverse the photos, the better chance you're going to have of getting featured. Photos that are blurry or only show a part of the system or, you know, have the side panel on and there's a glare. I can't really use those photos. So just make sure your photos are good. Uh, send in those systems. Keep sending them in. Uh, we're going to keep doing these. Uh, I'm scheduled to do these like once a month. Uh, but I've been getting so many submissions that maybe I'll start to increase the frequency. And if it starts going really well, maybe for season two, I guess we'll call it after episode number 10, uh, maybe we'll increase the prize. So we'll see how that goes. But without further ado, let's get into our first system for Show Me a Rig episode seven. All right, our first system is from Robert S. Robert writes, hello, Brian. My name is Robert and I am submitting my first ever rigid tubing build. I just completed this build and plan on using it primarily for gaming, but my wife will use it occasionally for some graphic design. This is only the second PC I have ever built. The last one was 10 years ago. I know the bends are not perfect, but I plan on changing them once I'm able to obtain one of the new Nvidia GPUs coming out this year. Good luck with that. At that time, I might do a paint job on the case as well. All right, so Robert is rocking a Be Quiet Dark Base 700. And clearly, this is an inverted Dark Base 700, which is really cool. Something that I actually haven't yet done with mine. Uh, i5 8600K at 4.8 gigahertz, an MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard, four by four gigabyte sticks of Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR4 3000 an MSI GTX 1070 Seahawk EKX, Western Digital Black 256 gig NVMe M.2, two terabyte Seagate Fire CUDA hard drive, Corsair RM850X power supply, six Enermax TB RGB fans, and Primo Chill View Coolant, UV Cobalt. All right, Robert, let's see what you got. Nice picture of your setup. Maybe clean up some of these cables. Um, I actually found that, uh, like the, the Velcro ties that come often with like power supplies and stuff, or sometimes with cases are great for like tidying these up. So like if you gather all of these cables back here, uh, together and then just tie them and, and let them run down the back and then come out straight. It looks just a little bit cleaner instead of having these, but we're here to talk about the PC. So let's do that. Uh, so, okay, first up is a shot of your basement. I guess you removed the side panel cover to show me your, show me the guts of what's going on down here. Uh, and I guess, so these are extensions. These are not full, uh, it's not a full cable set, which certainly comes out looking fine. But the problem with that, and I think that I've actually talked about this in a, in a different video, is that you, you often end up with just too much cabling, too too much stuff to to kind of jam behind the uh, the motherboard tray, and it's, sometimes it's hard to close that back panel as a result, uh, just because you're just adding more wires, and they're not thin wires; they're generally pretty thick. So, you know, you end up with a situation where you have to get a lot of stuff down in this basement, and if you're running water cooling equipment down here, um, room can get a little cramped. Although it seems like you're actually doing fine. Um, so, uh, you know, I hope that's not an issue for you, but I've definitely found that if I have the option, I generally prefer to get a full cable set as opposed to extensions, although extensions still look great. Um, and right away, there is a couple things in this photo that are standing out to me, um, like the <laughs> green and blue PWM cable, uh, that's coming off of your D5 pump. And similarly, 
uh, the green and blue and red and black cables that are coming down the bottom there. Um, that's a pretty easy fix, and that's just uh, taking those uh, those pins out and then sleeving that with some black, you know, some black sleeving. You can get a sleeving kit for like ten bucks from from Micro Center or Newegg or something, uh, and that's a, that would that would clean that area up really nicely. Uh, and it, you don't even have to do like a great sleeving job; just cover that you know this little area right here, uh, and it, it'll just look it'll look ten times better. So let's see what else we got. All right, so we got a full system view here. Like I said, this is an inverted Dark Base 700, and I re I really like the way these fans look. I haven't I haven't yet built these in this with these in the system. Uh, he said he bought these on my recommendation, I guess, or, or as a result of the video I did where I featured them, and they look really good. I really they look different with like the the you know the sections on the side. Um, so I'm glad you like them. I'm glad you use them. <clears throat> So one of the issues that I find with inverted cases, although they tend to look really cool because you don't generally see uh, cases that are flipped around like this, is that everything ends up being upside down. And that would drive me crazy. It was one of the reasons that I don't generally do inverted builds. You know, the, the, the text is printed on these in a certain way so that it, you know, when you have the case in a normal orientation, it's right side up. Same thing with the, you know, the printing on the BRM heat sinks. This is just vertical, so this doesn't matter over here. Uh, and it looks like your your XSPC. Well, I guess this is a this is a block that you could flip. Um, doesn't matter which which way you put it. So you can make this the race storm block. Um, you can make it right side up either way. But a lot of times, the, you know, any text like the MSI logo on the on the chipset is upside down. It would just drive me crazy, but I know that it doesn't. Some people just don't care, and so that's just a matter of personal preference. That's not that's not a knock on your system at all. Um, that's just something that I, that I would see uh, every day if I were to look at this case. But uh, this looks like you said your bends aren't that great. These bends look pretty good. Um, so there's your view coolant, and just be aware that um, Primo Chill has put out a bulletin on this that if th this coolant will break down if you're using it for more than eight hours a day, which a lot of people tend to leave the systems on 24 hours a day. So be aware of that. Uh, I don't know if they're offering some kind of a replacement uh, or not, but I might check up on that if you haven't. If you're not aware of that, just look into it because you might want to replace this fluid, this fluid if you are running the system all the time and you, know, you can't just go turning it off every eight hours. Uh, there's your dominator platinum, there's your XSPC block, and there's your system with the lights off. Not quite as exciting, but yeah. So the bends here, I, I'm not. You said you know you're you're gonna redo the bends, for, especially for the you built two PCs in ten years, and this is I assume your first water cool build, and this looks awesome. You got this 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 run, come from here. Doing like a 45 degree bend out here and then 90 and going around and looping and coming back down. I'd be intimidated doing that bend. That's crazy. This is this is a this is really nice. And maybe these maybe these are hiding like a kink over here or something. We don't know. Uh, but <clears throat> either way, this I I don't know that uh, the tubing is something that stands out to me as being wrong with this build. This looks really good. Uh, and congratulations on your first water cooled system. Because uh, I'm sure that uh, your 8600K is doing really well for you, especially especially gaming. You know, 8600K and a GTX 1070 are like match made in heaven. Like I just did an 8600K 1070 Ti system, which is very similar, and um, I love the way it performed. So those those parts go together really well, and I'm sure with with both of them on water, they're both running really cool, and this system looks great. I, I don't have very much to crit critique besides this uh, this blue and green cable, this PWM cable down here. Sleeve that up, man. Just sleeve it up. You'll thank me later. Uh, but this looks really great. Thanks for sending this in, Robert. And thanks for watching. Moving on. We're going to change gears a little bit here and get into a nice little air-cooled system. Uh, this is from Theo. Theo writes, I'm Theo from Sweden and I'm 13 years old. This is my computer that I built and use for gaming. Short and sweet and succinct. I like it. Uh, so Theo's got a Ryzen 1500X, it's a Ryzen 5 chip, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, an Asus RG Strix B350 Gaming F, Asus RG Strix Radeon RX 574 gig, Corsair Vengeance 8 gigabytes, 
of DDR4-2400, a Corsair VS650 power supply, uh, all housed in a Fantex Eclipse P300 with some Fantex custom sleeve extensions. And he writes the chassis and graphics cards, gra chassis and graphics card were custom painted. So Theo's only 13 and uh, he's already got a nice little system here. And I, the, the Fantex, the P300 and the P400 are great little cases. Uh, and they, 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 they have so many features packed in for such a, a reasonable price uh, that, uh, you know, I built in them a couple times and they're, you know, Fant I always really like Fantex stuff, but these cases are, are, are great and they're compact and, um, and, you know, for the price, you can't really beat them. The first thing that strikes me about your system, Theo, is that it looks like your exhaust fan might not be plugged in or might just be stuck for some reason because the Hyper two, the fan on the Hyper 212 is spinning and this one is not. So that might be something that you might want to address. Yeah, because it looks like all your fans, your lights are on, your fans are spinning and this one's just kind of just kind of chilling. Maybe it's tired. It's time to take a break, I guess, every once in a while. But this system looks really nice this is a, a you know I, I can always appreciate a nice air-cooled build with reasonable components so you've got a ryzen 5 1500 x uh it doesn't necessarily need a whole lot of cooling but the hyper 212 is certainly going to be up to the task and it's it's like you you you, you correctly assessed where to allocate your funds uh so you have you know a, a a uh, cooler that matches the processor. You've got a GPU and RX 570 that goes perfectly with the, uh, I guess, the roundabout budget that you were going for in this system. Some people overload on the GPU and skimp on the CPU or the other way around. It looks like this is a nice balanced build. Uh, you do only have one stick of memory. Ryzen really benefits from faster dual channel memory. So that might be something that you might want to look into upgrading. That'd probably be the first thing that I upgraded if I were you getting either another stick in there or upgrading to like a 3000 speed kit. Uh, if you can, that's actually going to give you some significant performance improvements uh, with that Ryzen 5 1500X chip. But looks like you really take care of the system. Uh, it doesn't, I mean, it's not, it's not dusty. All the cables are run really nicely. Um, and everything is routed through the appropriate grommets or, or pass-throughs at least. This cable up here, there's really not a whole lot you could do with in this case because it has to go, oops, has to go through this very small, very specific little hole up here. So even if you can kind of route it up and then across, um, you're still gonna see it. So there's not really much you can do about that. I'm just glad you didn't plug it in like in the middle of the board or something like that because that drives me crazy. Uh, but your color scheme is on point. Uh, looks like your cable management is on point. The components are on point. The case is on point. Just get this fan plugged in. This fan needs something to do. It can't just sit there like that. Uh, but other than that, man, really great job, Theo. Thanks for sending it in. And um, look forward to what your second build might be in a couple years. And then lastly, here is Andre's setup. Andre writes, hello, Brian. My name is Andre, and in November 2017, I completed my workstation, Red Blaze. She was supposed to be sort of a clone build of Skunk Works by J's Two Cents, but I can't quite call it that yet due to not being finished. Although I was not able to completely finish everything, I was able to get the system up and running. I plan on finishing it later and introducing my graphics card or two to water on a second loop. I also plan on getting rigid tubing and switching over to red pastel fluid. I wanted two 1080 Ti's in this build, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen at this point. The 1080 Ti is on air right now, but will receive a water block later on a second loop if I get my second card. The CPU is being water cooled where the reservoirs are currently daisy chained to each other. I use the system for video and image editing, gaming, and as my personal web server. Uh, I also plan on setting up my own cloud and media servers on it in the future. Neat. Okay. So we got a Case Labs Magnum SMA8, AMD Threadripper 1950X, Asus Zenith Extreme Motherboard, Corsair Vengeance RGB LED 32 gigs DDR4 3000, an EVGA GTX 1080 Ti for the Win 3. And he doesn't talk about uh, power supply or storage here. Okay. So let's dive in. 
So this is a great looking setup. You got your triple monitors over there. Uh, and I guess a fourth monitor for, for something. <clears throat> and then here's the system over here, all in, few, in full view and glory. So yeah, so I guess you you know you can really tell that this the uh, the idea here was I guess based off Jay's build. Although a lot of builds in the SMA8 do look like this with the two reservoirs uh, and the tubing going down through the mid plate uh, with pass throughs. Uh, you opted for soft tubing here. I know you said you're going for uh, rigid tubing later on, um, which is fine. This actually. This looks good. I like this soft tubing. Uh, I mean, everything is is neat. The, the thing that bothers me about soft tubing sometimes is that people just put too much slack in it. If it's done and cut appropriately, then this, I mean, it comes out looking like this, which is really nice. Um, some nice cables going on here. Everything looks trained. Uh, I like that you went up with this one instead of over, which you, I guess, could have done. I also like how uh, you took your IO cables and ran them along the bottom of the board, motherboard and out of this uh, this pass through instead of maybe like down or something like that where where you see the the cables just against the bare metal which wouldn't look nearly as good uh, using all uh, Corsair um, looks like SP no these are airflow and the AF 120s or AF 140s um, I'm not really sure but yeah everything all the fans match which is nice and I don't there's really there's hardly anything to critique about this build. Uh, it looks beautiful. You did a great job. Um, and oh, it looks like this picture was taken before you decided to tuck those cables away. Aha, we found you out. And this one too, look at that. We found your dirty little secret before you before you tucked them down under the motherboard. I hope this is the way that you have it now because this, this just looks so much better than you know having these cables over here like this. Um, but. That's really the only thing that I could see. There's, uh, I don't really know that you did anything necessarily wrong here or that I would change anything. Um, you said these are running uh, in series right now. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's interesting. I guess you're just doing that to fill the, the, the space because this is just a huge open area over here in the SMA. Otherwise, you just had like one single reservoir. Um, that, that might look a little silly, so I understand what you did there. And then you could just use this same setup when you go, when you expand out to a dual loop, you could just keep these reservoirs, add a second pump, um, you know, down below, down in this chamber down here, and you're good to go. Maybe drill a couple other pass-throughs here so you can come back up to your graphics card setup, however you want to, however you want to do that. Um, and I mean, there's, there's plenty of room down here to do that. You're not going to be restricted in any way. Uh, but I'm actually going to be using uh, this motherboard uh, in this project too. So this is uh, this is interesting because it's almost like uh, you did uh, the project that I'm doing before I'm doing it. Although I'm using some some different GPUs and different water cooling equipment. Um, but I did see in this this photo here that you're running at 4.1 gigahertz, uh, which is great for the 1950X. So it looks like the um, the water is doing well for you. Uh, I wonder if this is the new or the old EK block. I guess this is probably the old one because uh, I'm not entirely sure that they have, um, that this would have been submitted before the uh, the new ones came out. But if you haven't, you haven't heard, um, EK came out with a new revision of their Threadripper thread thread water block. Oh, that's supposed to cool a lot better because the jet plate's a lot bigger. Uh, and I think that they are offering free upgrades uh, from this block to that block. So look into that if you haven't already. But this is an excellent system, excellent setup. I'm glad you're doing something different with it. It's a web server, you know, and you're also doing some image editing and whatnot. So putting all those cores and threads to use. Uh, but overall, great job. Thanks for sending it in. So that's a wrap on Show Me Your Rig episode seven. Thanks for tuning in guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna to submit to possibly be featured on the channel, once again, this email address right here, showmeyourrig at gmail.com. Make sure those photos are good, that really helps your chances. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.